Now it's time for uh, today's perspective guest on the programme and anyone who needs them. That is the aim and now the achievement of my guest today on perspective is succeeded in making period products, so tampons and sanitary pads, to all women in Scotland free. Thanks to her bill in the Scottish Parliament, the country has become the first in the world to do so and she believes that what she's done, what her country has done, can now be replicated right around the world. A well, member of the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Labour Party spokesperson for health and social care, Monica Lennon, joins us now. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Why do you feel then that this was um, such an issue that needed tackling? Good morning and thank you for the, the invitation. Well, Periods are, are normal, is a normal part of a woman and girl's life, but unfortunately, um, poverty has become all too common. And we found in Scotland that some women and girls were going without essential pads and tampons during their monthly periods. Some had to resort to food banks and others sadly missed out on any product and had to remain at home during their period, missing out on education, missing out on work. So because period poverty is real, um, I decided we had to do something about that. And um, there's been a, a long campaign in Scotland, but I'm pleased that we now have agreement in our parliament and we now have legislation that will ensure that no one has to go without these essential products ever again. And what level is it at? I mean, how many people do you think are suffering in this way? It was very hard to tell in the early days of the campaign because there had been no research carried out whatsoever. And because women and girls felt so ashamed and so embarrassed, no one was talking about it at all. But survey work in Scotland found that around one in eight young girls um, felt that they would use period products if they were free in school. And sadly, during the pandemic, COVID-19 has caused more, more poverty and more economic harm. And Plan International UK have found across the UK that period poverty has increased, telling one in five women saying that they would need some help accessing period products. And why do you think it's these products that should be available in the way they are? I mean, there are other essential um, items as well. I mean, basic food, for example, which isn't necessarily free. Well, Scottish Labour is trying to tackle poverty in, in all its forums. And one of my colleagues has a, another member's bill in the Parliament, which is around the right to food. But menstruation has been a taboo issue for, for generations and I talked about the secrecy and shame that some women and girls feel around their periods. And it wasn't always about a lack of money. We found that there were other barriers to access to period products. So sometimes it was because of domestic violence and abuse within a relationship. Um, other times it was to do with health issues. So some women and girls have heavy irregular periods because of underlying health conditions and it was unfair that they had an additional financial burden in order to manage their monthly periods and we found that particularly in education settings in schools colleges and universities um, lots of teachers and lecturers felt that it would make sense to make period products easily accessible across campus and that would take the worry away from learners so no one would have to worry about where their, their next tampon was coming from. They could stay in class, they wouldn't have to worry. Sometimes people didn't have the right change, the right coins to use a, a vending machine. So we found some real practical barriers as well and when we consulted on the bill there was overwhelming support in favour of a free universal system of access. But most people said that they wouldn't use the free scheme, but it would be there as a safety net and it would be dignified so that people did feel that they couldn't afford the product. They wouldn't face any embarrassing questions. It could be expensive, though, isn't it? I mean, there's a uh, research has been shown that, that it could cost up around about 24 million pounds. That's around 30 million euros. Money's got to come from somewhere, hasn't it? So the revised financial memorandum, which was agreed between myself as an opposition member and the Scottish Government, um, brought those costs down because we've been doing some pilot work in Scotland for a few years now and we've been able to learn from that. It was really difficult to get precise costings because 
we are the first country in the world to do this nationally, so we didn't have international comparators. But for the bill that's been approved, which is free universal provision um, across Scotland for those who need it, and um, a legal requirement on schools, colleges and universities, we reckon it will cost around £8.7 million per year. That could vary if the cost of products vary and, of course, if uptake goes up or down. But based on our best estimates, we think just under £9 million per year. Could Brexit help here? I mean, one problem for Scotland has been that um, in Europe, 5% uh, has to be charged VAT on period products. I mean, that's something, uh, whilst the UK was in Europe, it has to keep, but not necessarily in the future once uh, the UK is out of Europe. Well, throughout the course of this campaign, we've looked to see what we can do in Scotland under the devolution settlement. So we have our own parliament in Scotland and you know, my party wants to make progressive change happen, regardless of what's going on in the constitution. There's an ongoing debate in Scotland about independence. We have the issues around Brexit, but we feel that, that we've been able to do this because it's the right thing to do. We've also persuaded some employers to take action on a voluntary basis. But I think there's a wider global issue about the cost of sanitary products generally. And there's a big role for uh, manufacturers to look at their costs. Um, women want more choice and they want to see products on the market that meet their needs. Um, so choice and dignity has always been at the heart of this. And of course, we want to think about the environment too. So any opportunity to reduce plastics, to um, promote use of reusable products, that's been really important to, to people in Scotland. So I'm optimistic that this bill in Scotland um, won't just make it easier to access products, but will spark a conversation about the needs of women and girls more generally. Yeah, you mentioned that around the world there. I mean, obviously, people watching this, um, do you think other countries now will take it up? Scotland's been the first. I'm very optimistic that that will happen. Um, since the bill was passed in Scotland, I've received some really lovely emails and messages from people right around the world. Some where campaigns already exist and people have been organised locally and nationally to, to campaign for free period products. Um, Scotland, I suppose, has set a, a blueprint to show that it can be done, it is possible. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope it is a catalyst for, for change and it gives people confidence because there isn't a single country in the world that has achieved gender equality and Scotland's got a long way to go in terms of equality for women and girls. But let's take the hassle out of monthly periods and, and make sure that people need free period products. They can get them in a way that's easy and dignified. And I think we all win if we get it right for all women and girls. Monica Lennon, good to talk to you on the programme today. Monica Lennon, member of the uh, Scottish Parliament Thank there, you. joining us for today's Perspective. Thanks again.